SVS SB13 Ultra mm -hmm. or new SB3000. Can get both around the same price. 2.1 setup with Kef R3s. Michael, you're an SVS subwoofer expert. Yeah, so the SB13, I reviewed the SB16 and I did review the SB3000, but they were probably two years apart. Um, yeah, well, you're not a measurement guy, but how did each one, what was the feeling that you got when you, were you impressed, well, you know, with each one? The, the SB3000 is a really small profile. I mean, it's small, which is awesome because it can fit just about anywhere. I was incredibly impressed how much bass I got out of that. Um, with a smaller driver like that, though, I typically prefer a ported because it has more output. It's not until you get into like really big drivers like 18, 21, 24 that I kind of lean more towards the sealed subwoofers. Mm. Um, but the I was really impressed with the SB3000. The SB16, I literally I wanted more and I had two of them. I'm like, man, I, I want to hear what the PB16 sound like. And they sent me two. I had two SB16s and two B, PB16s in my room at the same time. Are they a lot bigger? The SB13, is it like way bigger in size? Now that, again, I didn't review the SB13, so I don't know oh, okay. what that looks like. The yeah, SB3000 not. is a pretty small footprint. I think it's like, um, it's barely over, because I think that's yeah, the that's 12 inches. So it's like 13 inches. Yeah, the other one's like yeah. a 13 inch Yeah, you're right. Almost, it's like right? super compact. Dude, yeah, when, you guys were, when you guys awesome. were messing with those, did you see the, the subwoofer was moving? Like I had to weight it down to keep it from moving. Yeah. It was walking on mm. its own. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I have one. I use a SB3000 and okay. I'm always impressed with, like Michael's saying, it's a small enclosure. It'll it's jam, really dude. not big at all. You know, I guess it depends. If you're small somebody who's right. used to a yeah. sound bar, you're going to be like, dude, that thing's right. huge. But it's I like, told, a, I told my son to come in. I said, dude, you got to, cause I had just some music play in and I was, I was pushing it pretty hard. That joker was pounding for a little, you know, single driver. I was like, dude, this is quite impressive. So I was very pleased with that one. So um, not hearing the SB13, again, I, I'm not sure. Um, but SB3000, man, it's it was great for what it was, for sure. Okay, so let's take a look here. Cool. SB3000. Brad. SB3000 is here. And the thing that's interesting about it is it's almost to the edge you can mm -hmm. see, like, you can imagine right. how thick the wood is, right? Yeah. The wood has to be right there. Yeah. Right? Super compact design. So, boom. So, like, man, this thing is really as small as you can make it. He said the SB13 is about two inches bigger in every direction than the SB3000. So if we go here, okay, so you can tell mm -hmm. it's not going all the way to the edge. It's probably yeah. deeper. Yeah. Right? And a different driver, right? Mm -hmm. If you take a look at those. Yeah. yeah that might just be different. Does Well, yeah, I guess it's. No, this looks more similar to that other one that they use in, in the 16s, right? What is yeah, that? The Ultra. That they yeah, are... It kind of looks like a carbon fiber almost. It's what really, that really rigid. It, it does look like a different driver, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. It is. It's well, this really, is... really rigid. I know they use the same one as that. I forgot which company it was. but Oh, I, I don't know. I know which yet. driver this is. Mm -hmm. um, but it's customized, I guess, for their, their specification. Mm -hmm. But and yeah, you... so this one, which Wait, one were you, you thinking of the... the um... So it's just the it kind of reminds me of the Dayton Ultimax. It's kind of what it reminds. Me. I'm not saying it is by mm -hmm. any chance. I'm just saying like the cone um, kind of reminds me of that material. But dude, cones are cones. Like there's a handful of factories that are making the different parts. So mm -hmm. I, I, it's it's very easy for people to assume that a manufacturer is using a driver from this company, and just because of the Looks cone that it way. uses, or the surround, or the basket, or the magnet. But truth be told, there's like five companies that make cones. There's a handful of companies that make baskets. So at some point, stuff's going to look very much the same. Them. Sure. Yeah. And also, it depends on, you know, sometimes they get these companies to make one specifically for them. Mm -hmm. Right. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, and I just mean, like, you know, at the technology at some <clears> point <throat> kind of starts to become redundant, yeah, you huh? know, between the parts. So they'll say, you know, we want our own specific design. They'll change up the TS parameters, but the cone material may be the same or the basket they're going to use a stock basket because there's no point in having to retool and mm -hmm. charge the company another 40 grand to create a new basket when it, there's not much benefit there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tim said TC sounds. 
Oh, maybe. Uh, was it TC? I, I don't remember. Ultra? Mm-hmm. Ultra LMS? Maybe. Is that a TC thing? Um, the Ultra LMS? That's that Dayton, that I believe. Of? Dayton Ultimax or something? So I, that's what those. I was saying at first. But there was mm-hmm. a... Okay. I'm not even going to try to look it up because I don't know. I but in any case, in any case, yeah. I think it's more about who cares what specific mm-hmm. driver they're using. I think a lot of times it's just the implementation. So yeah. I think to answer this question, exactly. also, you know, th- to also answer this question, you have to look at what is the what are the box dimensions? Mm-hmm. Is this the right size for this particular driver based on the the TS parameters? The th- uh, Thiel small parameters mm-hmm. will determine, uh, you know, what size box you should make and a lot of times what's crazy to me is it's very easy to put those parameters into a bunch of different software and it'll tell you this is the I'm optimal like, size for it sure this is the enclosure size internal volume that you need and for whatever reason that sometimes companies don't use they go too small mm-hmm. or too big and i'm like what i don't get it you could have made it sound much better maybe cost. Yeah. yeah yeah, on, so, on the flip side of that, though, is you, Joe, I mean, you guys know as well, but this is kind of more for the people who are watching. Um, it's easy to see something like the SBS when they're in a really small, compact closure. The first thing I thought when I got the SB3000 was, but well, this enclosure looks way too small for this woofer. Like, knowing mm-hmm. what I know, having tested hundreds of woofers and things like mm-hmm. that. But mm-hmm. then you remember that they've got DSP built in, right? Mm-hmm. So they can create a link which transform and mm-hmm. take care of the, the resonance that usually would be born from a, a enclosure that's too small, right? Mm-hmm. So then they'll yes. basically just take care of that via DSP. As long as you've got the power and as long as mm-hmm. you've got the excursion available, like the woofer can go that yeah. far and you've got the ability sure. power, yeah. do whatever you want, right? Yeah. And they're putting pretty large aren't messing around. Yeah, they're putting pretty large amplifiers in these, you know. Yeah, for sure. They, what, the class D ones watts. especially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have really so, high efficiency. I think it, you you said it exactly. Um you know, you can go with a sealed. So actually, sealed is really good for for DSP. You know, because of the way that it rolls off and that you can control it. It's not gonna, you know, uh, with a ported design, you have to really worry about the excursion below the port tuning because the, the driver is going crazy. Yeah, it's going you know, you, now you have to worry about like it physically hitting something. Whereas with a sealed enclosure, you notice like it's hard to push in, right? So it's really controlled the whole way, and that's a downside if you're trying to get the most natural excursion or uh, natural deep base extension from it. But if you're talking about DSP, you want that level of control, right? So you can say, okay, this is the limit. It's not going to bottom out, right? You don't want the thing to bottom out. Um, so exactly that. So back to the question, which was, you know, which one should it get between these two? Oh, man. It's kind of, how what's the price difference, I guess? Because if they're both around the same price, the question might be, do you care about the size difference? Right? Because yeah. do you have the space for it? Sure. What what's amazing to me is you know, one way to get more output is to use a larger enclosure. Mm-hmm. The other way is to use a driver that can handle more power and just feed it more power. But it takes a right. lot more power, right? To make us if you want a closure to be small and to get the same output. You're gonna t- need to feed it significantly more power, and the yeah, driver need needs to be able to handle that much more. Versus just having a larger enclosure is a kind of an easy way to do it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, but I, but with the larger enclosure too, I mean, yeah, it's just you, the space issue then. So I, I kind of like the way that companies are using the uh, the electronics in like a DSP to use uh-huh. a smaller enclosure. I don't know. I, I think from the engineering perspective, it's pretty cool that they're able to come out with new drivers that can handle the excursion and the power. You know, it's, it, it's, I love it makes life easier. Like that's pushing the envelope, right? Instead of like if I were DIY on something, I'd mm-hmm. have to go build a freaking huge enclosure, you know, mm-hmm. tuned, ported and tuned down to 20 hertz, you know, just to, just to get as low as I want. But these companies yeah. are just, yeah, we've got DSP, we've got power, we've got excursion. We're going to just do it that way. And yeah. it'll fit in a small I love it. I love that. I love that too. Uh, you know, some of the things that I liked in car audio was how far people would push like random things like the Tang Band woofer that we're using. I don't know if you can see it in that thing. A little five and a quarter Tang Band. Yeah. Right? It has pretty good excursion, right? But people would put like a bunch of those into a huge enclosure. Like like you would it would it doesn't make sense to put in such a huge enclosure. And just to see how much output you could get out of it. And it's kind of cool because you could get 
decent amount just by putting a small driver into a large enclosure. So again, to answer the question, it depends on whether you care about the size difference. If not, I think what Michael would probably say is like a ported version of any, I kind of almost like any of the, the SB or a PB 3000 and up <clears throat> would probably outperform the SB 13 ultra. Would you say? Yeah. I would think so. I mean, I've been watching the chat. Some of them are saying the SB13 is the um, the 4000 model. So basically the 4000, I think, replaced the SB13. So it's basically the same line. So that mm. was a pre pretty big sub. I mean, the cabinet on that was a, a pretty big beast, not quite as big as the um, PB16 Ultra. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's some mixed feelings. I mean, Reginald says, hey, get the new SB4000. Some are saying go new SB3000. Um, some say it depends on what amplifier. So they use different amplifiers in different ones. Reverend Slim says if it has the original Sledge 1000 amp in the mm. SB13 Ultra, I'd get the SB3000 instead. If it has the 1200 upgrade in it, the SB13 Ultra might be worth it, but I normally say buy the one with the warranty. So definitely a lot of factors to kind of consider there. I love our audience. You know, they're so yeah, knowledgeable. Man. Yeah, I love it. There's always somebody who knows a little bit more about one particular thing, and I'm open to it. I'm very happy to have you guys here. And, you know, another recommendation would be give a call to SVS. They're going to tell yeah, you honestly. They will. Yeah, they're good folks. You know, you tell them your situation. They're going to ask you the right questions, <laughs> and they'll make a recommendation. You know, because they have a, um, a thing where you can send the thing back, right? Mm -hmm. You can try it out and send it back, but yeah. that's going to cost them money if you – choose the you know one that you're not happy with right yeah so it's in their best interest to make sure that you get the right one to begin with yeah and they're not scared to tell you like almost sell you out of something like their first inclination isn't hey you should buy the pb16 ultras because they're the biggest baddest that we sell i mean a lot of times when they go to shows they hardly ever, probably because of cost but also they bring some of the smaller stuff because they want to show you, you can get quality base even with a pair of their smaller subwoofers. Like, you know, for most people, this is going to be okay. This is going to be a really great experience for those crazy guys that want dual 18s or 418s or 224s. They're in a different breed altogether. Um, but they just make some really great subwoofers. I've always been pleased with pretty much everything. The only one I wasn't super excited about was the little micro, you know, hey. and I, I had four of them. I think they'd right. be great for a sub or for like my office here. It'd be cool to add it in here, but for a theater room, they just didn't. Mm -mm. Yeah. I, dude, I had to <laughs> trying to get a flat frequency response. I had to, <laughs> yeah. And, and could have been my room too. Cause I had to basically, there just wasn't enough headroom for me to just really make them amazing in my room. I have one under the desk here though. Yeah, that'd be awesome. In, in the 10 by 10 and I, yeah. and I have the monolith over there. So in yeah. this situation, yeah, hundred percent, this is a good situation. hundred percent. Are those the eight inch driver? Mm -hmm. ones? The that dual opposing. Uh, okay. Eight inch? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, for actually, this I guess the question is, are they actually eight inch or are they like really <laughs> six and a half or seven inch? Now? Probably probably seven. Inch. Yeah. seven inch. Yeah. Around us. After every Monday podcast, we have an after show. If you're interested in joining us, go to patreon.com forward slash daily high five.